I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, we have the Cold Team in the North, facing off against the Hot Team in the South, on, for a nice change, a map that is primarily naval. So, each team has one person in charge of two bases, one person in charge of a rear base, and one person in charge of a forward base. Sitting on his double wide house for the code team, this is Kaiser Wilhelm I, who is UEF. He is 1445 rated, and he is in dark blue. In the rearguard position for code team, this is Ermin der Ritter, who is 1203 rated and Cybrun. He's baby blue and he has gone first air there, so we'll see whether he goes for some early bomber play. Could be fun, or maybe he'll try and do a transport drop, we'll find out. And last but not least for cold team, this is Zapod, 1096 rated and Cybrun. He's in mauve. In the double base slot for Hot Team, we have Exterminator Hun. He's 1406 rated and UEF. He's in Burgundy. In the rearguard slot, we have Eco Player 7, who is 1208 rated and UEF. He's in red. And last but not least, in the forward slot, this is Dragst, who is 1105 rated. He's Seraphim in orange. Now, quick look at the map. First thing is, not much reclaim at all. And for poor old Zapod and Dragst, not many mexes, only seven each, which are uncontested. Whereas there are 14 for Eco Player and Ermin. And of course, 21 or perhaps 22 for each of Kaiser and Exterminator. And another thing to note, this is a water passage, a canal, so you cannot drive non-floaty units across there. So Navy is of course going to be utterly key on this map. Early aggression both from the Kaiser on this side and from Zapod on this side both of whom have brought their comms forward and are charging across the canals. Dragst is also coming forward with his comm, but Exterminator is choosing to remain in his base, and that means that Zapod might get a bit of damage done. Early naval construction. We have naval yards queued up for Ermin, Eco, and for Exterminator. There's a bomber out from Ermin. It's not super early, so I'm guessing that... Oh, okay, now we have five naval yards queued up for Ermin. I played in a game with him recently, and he was pretty good at going heavy navy, so I'm expecting he's going to do the same here. And I'm also expecting that that's why he went air, because he doesn't see a use for the land factory, and he wants to save up his mass for all that navy. So... The Kaiser has been forced back by Dragst because the Kaiser can't bring any units across this canal to support his comm, but Dragst can use his naughty hovering Zoes to help out. Ermin's bomber is coming to take on the Zoes. And is it going to get one? Yeah, I think it is. Ooh, close, but no cigar. 20 hit points on that Zoe. Meanwhile, Zapod is setting up a nice little beachhead here for his units to be produced. Two factories, a radar, and he leaves his engineer to finish the second factory while his comm just charges in boldly. That's pretty nice. Exterminator's response is to start the gun upgrade and he's getting engineer assist on it so he should be finished on that quite soon. And since Zapod hasn't really built much in the way of spam to help him yet... Ooh, but he loses that... 
He doesn't lose the engineer, but the engineer does retreat, meaning he's only got one factory to worry about. If I were him, I would be grabbing this reclaim with the comm and then retreating back to here. So Ermin, on his own, has got more naval yards than the opposing team combined. His bomber has managed to take out the Zoeys. This is sneaky though, look at this, we've got an engineer from Zaypod coming across to this undefended expansion belonging to Exterminator. Meanwhile, Zaypod is just setting up mexes on his opponent's island. That's pretty bold. He's also being forced to put out more of these AA tanks than he might want otherwise because of the bombers that Exterminator is sending. Meanwhile, the Kaiser has started the gun upgrade, but he's been forced to pause it. Is he having power trouble? Well, he isn't now, but if he re restarted that gun upgrade, then he absolutely would be, because that'll cost him 200 per tick, and... Ooh, you see that? He is, he is not doing super well on the power. But he's paused to balance it, which is great, I approve. Meanwhile, although the engineer is just capturing these mixes and then supported by Mantis, which is nice, Zaypod's comm is being driven back by Exterminator. He's heading back towards the water. I think he's going to make it, but with the gun, Exterminator is something that Zaypod has to worry about. He can't just stay around, and Zaypod's down into the red, he'll be safe in the water, but it does mean that Exterminator has free reign to clear up this beachhead. Or does he? Zaypod, you mad lad, what are you doing? He's coming out of the water, he's back up into the yellow. Exterminator lands one shot and puts him back into the red, and Zaypod wisely retreats. More naval yards going down for Eco Player, and he's already halfway to T2 Navy there. Meanwhile, though, both Zaypod and the Kaiser have got into the water here. And Kaiser looks like he's definitely getting some heavy assistance on those factories. Ermin getting a decent amount. So Ermin's also on the way to T2. The Kaiser is finally able to unpause his gun upgrade. And having cleared the beachhead, Exterminator is just charging across the canal with his comm, repaying the favour that Zaypod bestowed upon him by just charging solo across the pond. Looks like we've also got drags to get in gun as well. And he... Actually, he's only able to afford that in power because he is stalling mass, which is not too surprising given that he's only got those seven mexes, as we mentioned earlier. But he's pushing. He hasn't got many Zooey's in support, but this is a lovely raid. Bombers from Exterminator come diagonally across the pond, and immediately two mixes, three mixes. Four mixes for the Kaiser destroyed in a lightning bomber raid, but I think we're going to have to go to split screen as Exterminator is charging in on Zaypod, Drax is charging in on Kaiser. On the left, Dragst comes out of the water, but he's got a gun com, Kaiser's got a gun com, and spam, and PD, so Dragst will have to be careful. On the right, Exterminator is just shredding T2 mexes in Zaypod's base. Zaypod has started the gun, indeed he's nearly finished it, but he's got a lot to worry about as he's still in the yellow. And here on the minimap, we can see that this raid from Eco player is being countered by the massive production that Ermin has available to him, and Drax is being driven back into the water by that massive spam. He's killed almost all the spam and one of the PDs, which is great. 
but he's deep into the yellow. And he pops out again and just starts shooting at the Kaiser. Meanwhile, Ex Exterminator is just setting up mexes on Zapod starting mexes. What a flex. Drax, my dude, you're into the red. You need to get back into the water. And sure, he's got Zooey supporting, and the Kaiser is taking a bit of damage, but Drax really needs to get out of there. And here, the Navy from Code Team has been more than enough to send back the little raid from Eco. So, I think we can afford to go back to single screen as Zapod's Guncom approaches Exterminator. So, Zapod coming to take his base back. Meanwhile, though, Zapod can't really fall back to the water because his naval presence is being taken out by these subs from Ex Exterminator. And Exterminator, with more hit points and just as much in the way of upgrades, he could probably just take Zapod right now if he chose. But he doesn't choose and he's falling back to the water. Speaking of water, we have a cruiser out and a destroyer for Eco Player. But there's a destroyer and more frigates for the core team combined, so I think the hot team are going to be forced to retreat there. These subs are coming away from where they were trapping Zapod to join the fun because they could make a significant difference here, especially with the help of the shield boat from Eco. Exterminator into the water. Look at poor old Zapod's base though, and he's only got three mass per tick. That's brutal, poor Zapod. Quite a significant Zooey raid coming across the water from Dragst, but with it's a bit of a trickle, and with the Guncom from the Kaiser and these frigates, and look at this, this is beautiful micro from the Kaiser keeping the frigates moving. If you can keep the frigates moving, they're the ultimate counter to Zooey's because the Zooey's just won't hit them and they'll be picked apart in seconds by frigate shots. And as you can see, that's just that's just shut down drags to no problems. Meanwhile, Ermin charges right with his navy to try and deal some damage to Exterminator, but Exterminator is under the water and he he has only one sub of Ermin's to deal with and he puts up a torpedo launcher the torpedo launcher gets attacked but with a combination of reclaim from the com and the torpedo targeting it the sub just dies and then all of these frigates can do nothing to hurt exterminators com who might even try some sneaky reclaim shenanigans doesn't look like it though Speaking of that, I would like to see torpedo upgrades from Ermin, perhaps, or Zapod. Zapod could do great with the torp, just get the torp upgrade, dive into the water, cause havoc for poor old Exterminator. I say poor old Exterminator, he's obviously dominating the control of this side of the map, thanks to Zapod having had his base stomped all over, a feat which the Kaiser was unable to achieve on his side. That said, he is now setting up a beachhead of his own and he feels reasonably safe in doing so because he's got a destroyer, in fact he's got two destroyers and four frigates guarding it there, but I think these destroyers could be better brought to bear over here because we now have two destroyers, a cruiser, a shield boat and three subs for, make that three destroyers, although this one was unfortunately caught out of position. Oh no, we have got another destroyer. So the hot team navy is definitely superior here while these units are over here. And so we really need Kaiser to bring them back and join the fight. But it may be too late because look at the damage that Ermin's navy has taken while Kaiser was all the way over here. Dragst is also trying to dip his toe into the water. But as yet, he doesn't have either the eco or the production capacity to make a massive difference to the naval fight as things stand. 
We have one Lobo produced by these two factories for Kaiser. Let's see if we're going to get any more. No? Back to the Navy then. Feels like Kaiser has the slightly better naval fleet given that Well, I say that, but as I say that, in come quite a lot of torpedo bombers from Eco. And there is a cruiser over here, but it's not in position to stop the torpedo bombers that are getting quite a lot of shots off at the destroyers. And look at that. I say look at that, but that Valiant survived with 700 hit points remaining. And again, I want to see Kaiser bringing his units across here because Ermin keeps losing to engagements he doesn't have to lose against Hot Team's combined navy from Exterminator and Eco. Zaypod has dropped himself back into the water again, if at first you don't succeed. Exterminator coming out of the water again to set up this mex. Will he try to make a beachhead? And now we're beginning to see more of these Lobos gathering for the Kaiser. And he's setting up more factories while his cruiser missiles Dragst base. But Dragst is putting up TMDs and a Serachia, so I don't think that one cruiser, or even maybe two, will be enough. Especially not when... Now it's... Well, I say it's Ermin who's out of position. He doesn't really have any direct fire naval units of the destroyer variety. All of these are cruisers. But... Eco is pulling back, leaving these two cruisers unmolested. That may be a mistake. I would be sending in at least one destroyer to just go and take care of them. Drags degrees and he sends his frigates, but these are UEF cruisers with a little bit of direct firepower, unlike a Serra cruiser, which does not and only has the missiles. And so I think they're going to clean up that frigate before it kills them. The Lobo push has commenced, though, for the Kaiser. And Drags is forced to recall his comm to take it out. There's a lot of eco, which feels pretty vulnerable here. A T1 point defence goes up, not the best defence against Lobos, but it's as good as any in an emergency like this when they're already up close and personal. And it's good defence for the T2 point defence going up. Meanwhile there are Zooey's in the back and looks like Dragst is going to be reasonably quick to clean up this charge. But it has cost him a T2 mix and it has forced him to build T2 point defence in his base. So overall pretty good, though I don't think that Kaiser should be producing any more here. Meanwhile, two destroyers have snuck across from Eco and are taking out Kaiser's cruisers. But this is a significant force now massing up here for the cold team. That said though, Hot Team have pushed quite hard into here and Exterminator is supplementing it with Riptides, which might be able to get up and into Zaypod's Eco. Exterminator pushes out of the water against Zaypod's com. Maybe I th oh yes, he's hoping to sandwich the gun com and the riptides, but with Zaypod out of range of his com, Zaypod will just be able to kill the riptides without a problem and then come back for Exterminator. Riptides do deal decent amounts of damage, but unless the comm's in range, which he now is, okay, Zaypod may have more trouble than he'd hoped for. However, he hasn't got naval support because Code Team have made a little foray out. And I don't think they've got enough to take on this navy, but again, I feel like maybe Exterminator should just give his navy to Eco or vice versa so that they can micro it together because these shield boats are back here and they would do much better being up here. Zaypod has finished killing the Riptides, but Exterminator is still here with his uninjured com against Zaypod's half health com, but he's more interested in getting reclaim. And that's not a bad idea, I mean... Okay, Zaypod actually has T3 air. Not sure how he can afford it, but he's got it. 
and Dragst is just, as we said he would, clearing up these logos with no trouble. He can just take that out at will with his gun con. However, situation is looking bad in the water for Code Team. Go in, says Exterminator. And this is pretty brutal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Destros versus five, plus a torpedo boat and some shield support for the hot team, means that they are going to get the damage done, but there are top bombers coming out from the Kaiser, and this cruiser here, these two cruisers were a little far back until just now to see them off, however now they're in the mix and Exterminator has also brought in interceptors to help see the top bombers off. Undeterred, Kaiser sends in five more torpedo bombers. However, it feels like too little too late because there are now these two cruisers here, the torpedo bombers are quickly mashed and suddenly there's only two Destros left for the Code team against this navy. Also, excellent use of Reclaim Engineers running around in this pond here for Eco, picking up the vast heaps of Reclaim. Look at the amount he's cleared out there. And I think that every player would be benefiting from doing that. Looks like Exterminate has the same idea. More Riptides taking out Zapod's hard rebuilt units and good focusing the TMD down there so that these cruisers can continue to lay down pressure. Zapod crushed back to 15 eco again, poor guy. He has not had the easiest game of it. More torpedo bombers coming to try and stop the push from the hot navy, but Ermin has no fewer than four T2 naval yards and they're all producing destros. Actually that one's got some cruisers in the loop, but the... As, okay, three of them have the cruisers in the loop, but they're producing majority destros and they need it. The hot team is just, just being held back. Meanwhile, though, Dragst has sent gunships in over here, and they've hit the energy storage and only T1 power, but Ermin is actually... not only does he have no storage left, he is losing power and having to rely on picking it up from Reclaim and his friends, so he'll have to rebuild that fast. Meanwhile, Kaiser finishes his T3 upgrade on the naval yard and starts work on a Neptune. And that navy in the distance there is not a nice sight for the code team. And so this Neptune will be a godsend. Meanwhile, this cruiser, having wreaked havoc on the Zapod space, has noticed that Ermin doesn't have much in the way of TMD either and it is taking out these mexes. One T2 mex down could definitely be more because I'm not seeing any TMD here. And this is not, this engine needs to stop producing burst masters and start producing zappers. Build me a zapper, my dude. He's got one over here to guard his main base with the T3 mexes. Speaking of eco, we have a hundred lead for the hot team at the moment after Zapoid has been so brutally crushed and after more of these T2 mexes are going out for Ermin. He's lost two already. He looks set to lose two more. But Ermin's production of destroyers is beginning to pay off and it looks like... It feels like Ermin might just have the naval advantage here if he can keep these boys down before these boys come in to join the fray. And as if that weren't enough, 
there's the Neptune sailing majestically across the ocean towards the fight. And Riptide's getting in there. Ermin loses a T2 power. He's managed to stop the Riptides, but he's lost four T2 Is he about to lose another T2 power to the Cruiser Fire? I think he is. Boom. Let's check his eco again. And that is brutal. He's about to be power stored. He's rebuilt his energy storage, but... Oh, he's got... He's getting some from somewhere. Zaypod has sent the gunships that he's managed to get up, and he's now got two T3 air factories somehow. Despite his lack of eco, he is doing a good job of trying to rebuild. The gunships clear up the riptides that Exterminator has been pushing in. And it looks like we're going to get two naval fights at once here. Here on the left, Kaiser engages Eco, and Kaiser has a Neptune, two Neptunes in there. So does Eco. He's got up to T3 as well and brought out one Neptune, but two Neptunes under a shield or one Neptune not under a shield? I know where my money is. Over here, Ermin has five destroyers, and it looks on the surface like Exterminator has more, especially when you factor these torpedo bombers in. But there's only one destroyer in there, the rest is all frigates and riptides, and I think that this looks like better than it is for Exterminator. And yeah, look at this, these, these Desperals, these Salems are shredding through Exterminator's navy. We have air from drags, T2 gunships coming in. They're Vulthus, which are the best T2 gunships, so they might make a difference. And But there is a cruiser in here, and I think that cruiser... And there's a cruiser here as well, a tool now from Ermin. And the gunships just get shredded before they make it through the shield. And as we said, despite the torp bombers... And Zapod now has ASFs helping out. I'm very impressed by what Zapod's done, despite the damage he's suffered. Ermin has cleared up the fight which Exterminator brought to him on this side and so now we've got now we've got Code Team pushing back. It felt like this was a one game for Hot Team when they had their navy pushing in here, the Eagles being smashed by cruisers and riptides here. What happened to you Hot Team? Well for one thing multiple Neptunes from the Kaiser happened to you. That said, Eco is cleaving up in an air fight over Ermin's base, despite the fact that Ermin has got a decent bunch of T1 AA in there. And there are Yenzines coming across raiding from Dragst. He's also got a TML on his comm, but he's only hitting these tanks with it so far. It feels like there's just not enough to really do any damage here, and why yells Exterminator as this navy charges in into their home leaf of the clover? Stop it now. He's not at all happy. He's sending riptides across trying to get damage done. But it feels like the code team have just coordinated slightly better with their navy and as a result they're winning it. I mean Drag now has T2 navy and he's got a cruiser out. He's building more T2 naval yards. He really needs destroyers because they need every ounce of naval firepower they can get. And there's a summit battleship out for Eco, which is all well and good, but against these multiple shielded Neptunes, I don't think it's gonna be enough.
despite a 300 eco deficit, the code team are somehow just smashing it navally. More death drills from Ermin cleaning up the riptides that Exterminator is trying to push with. We have a strat out from Exterminator and it does take out a capped mech from the Kaiser but and there isn't really much of an air response yet but that feels like it's too little too late because the summit is taking fire. Let's get a nice cinematic shot of that because isn't a naval battle pretty? Down goes the summit to the bottom of the ocean. The naval HQ is being focused. And down it goes. No more T3. There were four T3 naval yards there for Eco. And everything that the hot team are throwing at this just can't stop it. Eco retreats onto the land. Yellow is AFK, says Exterminator. I don't agree with that. Purple is AFK, responds to the Kaiser. No, they just didn't have any eco, my dudes. You're being unfair on them. Seven mexes is just not enough to work with. They got screwed by the map gen. And Exterminator resigns. Eco will inherit his stuff, of course. This is a ladder game. But Zapod is coming in with his com to support the naval pressure. I mean, he's got gun and he's now got stealth, so that's not a that's not a bad thing. Exterminator has some theories about just how easy the win is going to be for Code Team. Not particularly relevant theories, but theories nonetheless. Drax is actually getting a decent number of Yenzines into the Kaiser's base, as we can see up here. But don't forget that the Kaiser does have a gun com. Still, Yenzines aren't bad, and nah, he's a, there's too much overcharge to stop that. And meanwhile, what do I see here? Could it be some naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie? To borrow Guile's favourite phrase to use about Cybrans, other than you know phrases about tearing his eyes out and that sort of thing. But whether you love them or hate them, Cybran destroyers can walk, and they are walking right now straight into Eco's base. Focusing the P gens is a nice touch, because when that goes up, it'll probably take out the shield generator and it. Oh, they just stopped the shield generator. These arty would have been a nice touch if they were just shooting things in the water. But these rude little fellows are no longer in the water. They are shooting across the land and they're walking up on their rude little spidery legs. And as if that weren't enough, there are more doing the same over here into what was Exterminator's old base. Meanwhile, the Kaiser has brought his rather more waterlocked navy to bombard drags from the bay. Yuko is still making a play of it. He's retreating. He's building stuff on both sides. This is quite a nice riptide raid that he's got going here. I like Zapo just setting up on the on the coastline here, another beachhead, protected by his com, confident that his gunships and his com will be able to defend it, as will this T2PD. The Salems continue their march across the land, all over but the crying. The fat lady is opening her mouth and preparing to bellow out some Wagner, perhaps. The Riptides are being pecked at by these gunships, but it feels like there aren't enough. However, they're just going to get a bit of eco damage done, and that's going to be too little too late. 
Hot Team had the eco lead for so long, until now, and what did they do with it? Nothing. More and more cruisers being built by the Kaiser as he rains down fire upon the base of Dragst. And now it is Code Team who have doubled the eco of Hot Team because all of this base, all of it, has been mashed and Eco player is taking fire both from the Salems and from the Neptunes in the bay. He dodges, but no, boom, the fire lands upon him and Ermin Salems claim the kill, leaving only Dragst. And what's he going to do about this, my dudes? I think I can say, quite safely, without the risk of, of um, being proved wrong, that the answer is he can do nothing at all. He has a decent flight of these torque bombers, but so many of these units of cruisers bombarding him with TMLs. Orange gave me time to get big ships, says the Kaiser. I don't think His Highness accepts any explanation, retorts Dragst. And I do understand Dragst's position. He had a pretty awful map gen. Over here, yet more Salem's walking out onto the land. But drags to like a brave and noble... Oh, I was going to say he looks like he was walking into the Salem's, but now he's nicking under the shields and bringing yet more shield gens with him. Okay, there we go. Now drags like a brave and noble warrior, walks to his doom in the face of a bunch of Salem's. Boom. Despite having been hundreds of eco down for a great portion of the game, somehow Code Team make a naval comeback, go charging into the enemy's navy and wipe it out, and win. How did Hot Team lose from such a huge eco lead? Could an XP have been the answer to that? An Atlantis perhaps? Or, given that we saw how the Hot Team definitely had air dominance, thanks to that fight that eco player took over Ermin's base could having drags start an arse washer and then eco finish it off that could have also been a good play for them take the navy out from the skies or should they have used Seratech again from drags to fill the navy with Yathsul subhunters which I think would have swung it if they'd had enough tell me in the comments below while you're down there don't forget to like subscribe and obey I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.